Now I want to discuss what I consider to be the top 10 questions concerning a candida yeast overgrowth situation. Question number one, are there any accurate tests that will tell if I have a candida yeast problem or not? There are several tests out there. Uh, probably one of the ones that is m considered most relevant, and it's a test you can take right at home, is called the, the saliva test or the spit test. And what that test consists of is first thing when you wake up, you get a uh, glass out of the cupboard. It's got to be a clear glass. You got to be able to see through it or see into it. You fill it with about eight ounces of water and you spit it. It's, it's really that simple. Then you return approximately 30 minutes later and you take a look at the, the saliva. And what we don't want to see would be little legs hanging down from the saliva as it lays at the top of the water. We don't want to see little legs or strings hanging down towards the bottom. Uh, we certainly don't want to see any debris in the bottom of the glass. What we would like to see is, is the saliva just forming bubbles on top of the surface. If we see legs, if we see debris, those are certainly pointing us towards the direction of a potential candida yeast overgrowth situation. But also keep in mind that it isn't necessarily the candida yeast itself that is contributing to our issues, but the toxic waste that is being released by this fungus as it eats. So I have had situations in the past where people have, have called me up and said, Mike, you know, my saliva test really looks bad. I mean, I've got strings hanging down like spider legs. There's stuff in the bottom of the glass, but my issues aren't that bad. What's going on? And then I've had the opposite occur also, uh, 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 where their saliva test doesn't look that bad. It's got a few strings hanging down, but their issues, I mean, they're just miserable. Uh, the thing is, perhaps one person's body isn't quite as allergic to the toxins being released as the other person's. So that's something to keep in mind. The spit test will tell you uh, or give you an idea of the presence of an excess of candida yeast in your body, but it won't necessarily tell you how, how allergic you are to the toxins being released. I think one of the things you can always do is look at the list of issues tied to a candida yeast overgrowth situation. Uh, the digestive problems, gas and bloating are, are, are pretty good signs of a candida yeast uh, dysfunction uh, potentially within the intestinal tract. Nail fungus, athlete's foot, uh, of course vaginal yeast infections in women, jock itch in men, eczema. Uh, there are many things out there and when you start piecing these together, uh, you know, I think the one conclusion you can consider is a candida yeast overgrowth. Question number two, I have a great diet with few, very few carbohydrates. Why do I continue to have candida yeast problems? The answer is diet is certainly something that we ha have to consider as far as influencing a, a potential candida yeast overgrowth situation. But the other things would be heredity, stress, use of antibiotics, uh, being intimate with somebody who has already has candida yeast problems. So you could have a fantastic diet. And I have many people that come to me that, you know, that, that have just terrific diets, but they still have candida yeast problems. So they have to consider these other potential influences. Again, heredity, um, um, stress level, things like that, because they do play a factor in there. It's not always diet. So we want to keep that in mind. Question number three. I'm a guy, and guys can't get yeast problems, right? That's, that's totally false. Guys can certainly get fungal problems. Obviously, they don't get vaginal yeast infections, but they certainly get jock itch, nail fungus, athlete's foot, oral thrush, which is a potentially a white coating on the tongue and throat. This happens quite often. As a matter of fact, not long ago, I had a gentleman contact me um, anytime he would drink a bottle of beer. And, and beer is, is, is very, very hard on a candida yeast situation. Uh, Anytime he would drink a bottle of beer, the next day he would wake up with white covering his tongue and all over his throat. 
there you go. I mean, that's, that's a sign of a, a potential fungal problem. Question number four, I'm a female, but I don't have a vaginal yeast infection, so I shouldn't have a candida problem, right? No, that's wrong, too. Uh, just because you do not have a vaginal yeast infection if you're a female, that doesn't mean you don't have a candida yeast problem. Again, it could be manifesting itself as something else, like sinus problems, or food allergies, or chemical sensitivities, or nail fungus. So no, a, a lack of a vaginal yeast infection does not mean you do not have a, a candida yeast problem. Number five, what do I have to do in order to be cured of candida? Well, let me set the record straight. You cannot just blow all the candida yeast fungus out of your system and never ever have a problem again. That's not the way it works. This is a naturally occurring substance in our bodies, and it does reform. You can control it, but you can't cure it. You just can't blow it out of your system so it never ever comes back. And what you want to do to try to manage it is, of course, having a, a controlled diet or eating smart where you're not consuming carbs constantly and taking the right dietary supplements that are designed to help uh, bring relief of issues tied to a potential candida yeast overgrowth. Number six, how can a sinus problem or athlete's foot be a contributed to something that's going on in my intestinal tract? Again, candida yeast fungus is, is centered in the intestinal tract, uh, and that's where it's really doing its thing. But these, this waste, this toxic waste that it expels, is circulating the body. And if we're potentially allergic to this waste and it manifests itself as athlete's foot or a sinus problem, then that's what's exactly going to happen. Number seven, I never had this problem until the last couple of years. What's changed? Uh, many times somebody will come to me and say, Mike, you know, I've, I've never had issues like this. And then all of a sudden, bam, I wake up one day and I've got uh, uh, di gas and bloating problems or I've got sinus issues or I've suddenly got nail fungus. I never had that before. What's going on? The body's always in a very delicate balance, and it doesn't seem to take an awful lot to throw it out of kilter. So you could have always been on the edge of a candida yeast problem, but nothing has thrown you over the thrown you over the edge. So maybe all of a sudden you had a stressful situation, or you took an antibiotic, or you've really been hitting the carbo carbohydrates lately. That could all of a sudden again push you over the edge. You've got a full-fledged uh, candida yeast issue going on. Number eight, I had this problem under control once. How did it come back? Again, this is a, uh, you know, this is a naturally occurring substance. It will come back if it's encouraged to, either through an improper diet, not taking the right dietary supplements, uh, being intimate with somebody that has a potential candida yeast problem. It, it, it will come back if, if, you're in, if you invite it to come back. Number nine, won't taking an antifungal medication take care of the problem? Temporarily, it, they do seem to have the potential to help. But long term, it may not be the, the best thing to use. Uh, antifungals, they circulate the body within the bloodstream. They can potentially affect internal organs. All you have to do is go on the internet, search uh, some of the prescription antifungals, and look up what some of the side effects or potential side effects are. And I think you'll find out uh, what's going on with those. And maybe they aren't the best long-term use uh, for a candida yeast overgrowth situation. And number 10, won't taking a probiotic take care of the problem? Probiotics, live bacteria. They are a good thing to take to help maintain digestive health. But if the probiotic you're taking does not have the right strain of bacteria that do combat candida yeast fungus, then they're probably not going to have as, as positive effect as you think that they could. So that's something to keep in mind. You need the right probiotics for a candida yeast situation. Just going in over to the store shelf, picking up any uh, probiotics, flipping it over and saying, oh, geez, this has a lot of strain. It's got a lot of bacteria in there. This is going to help me. No, not necessarily. There are only a few strain of bacteria that 
seem to be aggressive towards a candida yeast situation. And then I've got a bonus question here, number 11. I never had a candida yeast problem until I became intimate with this person who has many of these issues. Is it possible that I got it from this other person? After working with, with many, many people, it does seem that if somebody has a candida yeast overgrowth situation, they could potentially contribute to that situation in another person. Uh, I think that's something that needs further study, but it does seem to be uh, a relevant factor for many folks. Thank you.